The home team University of Houston Cougars are to meet the Auburn University Tigers from Alabama. The Cougars, an independent member of the NCAA, play their regular season games here at the Dome in the nation's sixth and largest city. The Tigers are members of the strong Southeastern Conference. We move inside this fantastic structure where a crowd of more than 55,000 can sit under a roof in the comfort of a controlled temperature of 72 degrees. The game is sponsored by the nonprofit Greater Houston Bowl Association, a group of civic minded business leaders and sports fans of Houston. All proceeds of this annual event, beyond actual expenses, go to charity. And here are the fans ready to join millions of viewers across the nation watching the Hughes Network telecast of this major bowl contest. In fact, this second such occasion is leading rapidly to a new American tradition for New Year's Eve. Watch the Blue Bonnet Bowl game just before your party to welcome the new year. Before we get into the game, let's take a quick slice back to acquaint you with these two fine teams. Let's watch the Tigers of Auburn get familiar with the AstroTurf playing surface in a pre-game workout at the Dome after arriving a few days before the game. Auburn University President Dr. Harry M. Philpott and Athletic Director Jeff Beard led a sizable contingent of fans and official party from Alabama to support the team. A great educational institution of the South, Auburn was founded in 1859. It now has an enrollment of 15,400 students. Auburn plays its home games at famous Cliff Hare Stadium, exceeding 61,000. Auburn earned this Blue Bonnet Bowl bid from Chairman Lou Hassel and his selection committee by compiling a fine 8-2 record against a tough schedule and ranking 6th in the nation in scoring. This game closed a big year for Jordan, who earlier was named a charter inductee of the new Alabama Sports Hall of Fame. Let's meet the 1932 Auburn graduate and some of his squad in the Dome at their workout. Here is Jordan with team captains number 54 Mike Colin and number 50 Tom Banks, who we'll see soon in game action. And here's the Tigers' splendid sophomore quarterback, Pat Sullivan. This was the ninth bowl bid in Auburn history, the seventh in 19 seasons for Ralph Stug Jordan as head coach at his alma mater. Now let's get acquainted with the host, U of H Cougars. Certainly in familiar territory in this pregame workout, they are popular tenants of this world-famed sports edifice run by Judge Roy Hoffheim and his Houston Sports Association, who lease it from Harris County. Coach Bill Yeoman supervises the drill by this team that also had an eight and two record, winning eight in a row after two early losses. An alumnus of West Point, Yeoman has been Cougar head coach eight seasons with much success that includes national major college leadership and total offense for three seasons and a hatful of other remarkable statistics. The president of this state-supported university is Dr. Philip Hoffman, who is happy to join athletic director Harry Powell in accepting the first bid to a major bowl game for U of H. Although not established as a four-year school until 1934, Houston has made amazing progress in athletics, academics, and enrollment, and now has a student body of some 25,000 on an expanding campus. Here's a close-up of the Houston quarterback, Gary Mullen, with Cougar offensive coach Billy Willingham. Same as Sullivan of Auburn, Mullins is a starter at this key position as a sophomore. Coach Yeoman takes a final look as his team winds up preparations in a busy pre-game period that also had entertainment for the teams and official parties. There were many activities relating to the game, including a tour of nearby world-famed NASA, headquarters for the USA's Flight to the Moon, and other sightseeing jaunts before and after practice. A big event two nights before the game was an awards dinner at famous Sunny Look Fashionable Restaurant. The players and official parties of both schools as well as Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl officials in attendance. Morris Frank was a superb master of ceremonies, and here the Houston Chronicle humorous presents a special gift of a portrait to Coach Jordan of Auburn. 
Veteran bowl official Lou Hassel is seen here with Coach Bill Yeoman getting his portrait. The Auburn team and handsome travel jackets here enjoying the festivities. And the University of Houston team and their followers had a big time with special awards given to coaches, wives, players, and others ahead of the game since a big New Year's Eve party at nearby Astro Hall was on the agenda for after the game. One of the Auburn players models the fine blue bonnet watch received by a participant. But now it's time to move to the dome on New Year's Eve and play football. There was a tremendous pre-game show, including many Houston area fine high school bands on hand for a band contest for early arriving fans. And a terrific halftime show featuring the Auburn and UH bands too, with more on that later. But here's a dramatic mass band presentation of the national anthem, as taught by our photographers and sound men for Bob Bailey Studio. the famous other mascot for another nickname and battle cry of the visitors is War Eagle. And here comes the team from Alabama, the Auburn Plainsmen getting ready for the kickoff. The Houston Cougars have their famous mascot, Shasta. Here comes the University of Houston team, led by their cheerleaders, ready for their first major bowl game and before many hometown partisans. The captains meet with the officials for the coin talk. The referee is Percy Penn, while the other officials for this bowl game, David Hawk, Joe Schultz, Butch Lambert, and Harold Johnson. The team captains are Mike Colin, number 54, and Tom Banks, number 50, for Auburn. The Cougar captains are number 80, Jerry Drone, and number 54, Jim Strong. Both will show up, incidentally, on this film at the end of the game for special awards. So we're all set to go as Carlos Lopez will kick off for the red jersey Houston Cougars, and he boots it down to the 10, where Terry Beasley makes the return. He gets to the 29, but a jarring tackle by the Cougars' Charlie Hall knocks him loose from the ball. Houston recovers at the Auburn, 29. This big break as the game began was a big play, so let's see it again from a sideline view. Lopez kicks. Here's the run back. Rugged tackle to force a fumble. And the Cougars recover inside the 30 in scoring position. Gary Mullins directed a masterful game for University of Houston, and his first play is a quarterback keeper for three to the 26. Jim Strong had a great night for the two, and here's his first run for 10 yards to the Auburn 16 on a trap play with 235-pound captain Tom Banks on the stop. A couple plays later, it's Strong again on a trap play, good for nine yards down to the Tiger 1 with senior defense back Don Webb on the tackle for Auburn. But Auburn has a determined defense, and here is Mullen stopped short of the goal from the one by standout Tiger lineman Don Bristow. But the Cougars won't be denied this early chance. Mullen sneaks it in for the first touchdown on the next play. With only three minutes, 30 seconds gone, Houston has scored from 29 yards out in seven plays to take an early lead. Lopez comes back in, and the junior from San Isidro kicks the extra point to give the Cougars a quick 7-0 lead in the 11th annual Blue Bonnet Bowl. Once again, it's Lopez to kick off for Bill Yeoman's club, and he booms it down to the four, where Mickey Zosko of Melbourne, Florida, runs it back 28 yards to the Auburn 32 before Nick Holm of Victoria puts the drop on it. 
The Tigers call on Zosko again, and he gets three at left tackle to the Tiger 35 before Ronnie Peacock of Goliad gets it. That fine Auburn sophomore quarterback, Pat Sullivan, puts his first pass in the air, and he completes it to split in Terry Beasley of Montgomery for 11 yards to the Tiger 48. Now Sullivan passes again on the next play. It's good for 14 yards to a senior from Montgomery, Connie Frederick, all the way to the Cougar 38. The Tigers are fired up and on the move. But this big play nullifies the early Auburn drive. Sullivan is rushed hard. In the Philip Jones puts the drop on the Tiger star way back at the Auburn 47 for an 18-yard loss. Sullivan elects to throw the favorite receiver, Terry Beasley, but it's not enough for a first down. And Auburn decides to punt from the Houston 40. Tommy Frederick, the senior end, is the punter, and he throws this one up toward the Astrodome roof and into the end zone for a touchback. The Cougars crank it up again on a scoring drive. Let's pick it up as Mullins completes his first pass to All-American split end Elmo Wright. This one for 11 yards to the Cougar 31 before All-America defensive back Buddy McClinton makes the stop. Here's another pass from Mullins to Wright. This one for 16 yards down to the Auburn 35 before McClinton again makes the tackle for the Tigers on the two slick receiver from Sweeney, Texas. But the tough Tiger defense holds, so Houston decides to go for a field goal. Carlos Lopez comes in again. He kicks from the 17 for a 27-yard attempt, and the Cougars lead 10 to nothing early in the second quarter. Once more, Lopez kicks off for the third time in about 15 minutes. And it's to Mickey Zosko at the eight. The Tiger Jr. returns it 19 yards to the Auburn 27 before defensive back L.D. Rowden of Tampa gets him. Now we see Zosko on a drive at the middle for four yards to the Auburn 31 before Glenn Grace gets him. But the Mad Dog defense of Houston stiffens, and the Tigers soon have to punt. Here's a great punt by Connie Frederick. He puts it up a terrific 57 yards. And Houston's Calvin Akey from Inglewood, Colorado, manages to return it three yards to the Houston 16 before junior Wallace Clark makes the tackle for Auburn. Jim Strong, the San Antonio senior for the Cougars, will wind up the night as the game's top back. And here's an early credential. He makes a sensational 74-yard run. A big play. Strong is down to the Auburn 10 before they get him down. A fine saving effort by Buddy McClinton, Auburn's All-American, to save at least temporarily a touchdown. A couple of plays later, Mullins gets five yards from the keeper down to the one before McClinton again makes the save. Now watch the touchdown by Jim Strong. He takes a pitch out from Mullins, skirts left end, and gets the TD he deserved since his 74-yard run had set it up. Lopez again tries the extra point, but this is a rare miss for the lad who made 30 of 37 in the season. So Houston's lead is 16 to nothing in the first half. The Cougars kick off again, and Lopez Booth is taken at the Auburn 8 by Wallace Clark who makes a fine return of 32 yards to give Duke Jordan's men good field position. That precocious sophomore, Pat Sullivan, puts the ball in the air. Terry Beasley grabs it, and the Tigers gain 16 yards into Houston territory at the 44 before linebacker Glenn Grace downs the receiver. That drive fails, but now let's go for a score with the Fighting Tigers. Sullivan gets this club rolling with this 18-yard pass to the elusive Beasley to the Houston 45, where Charlie Hall of Yoakum is the tackler. Then Sullivan shows he can run as well as throw. He keeps for nine to the Houston 36 as this drive late in the half continues. Here's a terrific play by the Tigers for their touchdown. Mickey Zasko throws the half-back pass after the pitch out from Sullivan and he hits senior tight end Connie Frederick for a 36-yard touchdown shot. The 
extra point by senior kicking specialist John Riley of Abbeville, Alabama is good. And Auburn gets a morale boost just before halftime with his score. Connie Frederick shows the strain of battle as he retires to the bench after his touchdown, then accepts congratulations from teammates. And this poignant scene vividly shows how seriously these men took this game. Riley kicks off for the first time in the game after the Auburn score, and Swift sophomore Willie Roberts of Rochester, New York, makes a sensational return. He darts upfield behind the blocking and goes 53 yards all the way to the Auburn 47 before Larry Willingham gets him. Larry is no relation to Houston offense to coach Billy Willingham. The Cougars threaten again, helped by this unusual play. Mullen's pass is deflected into the hands of the alert Elmo Wright. And the play is good for 22 yards to the Tiger 25. But when the drive stalls, a field goal attempt from the Tiger 8 on fourth down by Lopez is blocked by Willingham, recovered by Mike Cullen to end another Houston threat. After an Auburn drive stalled, Houston tried this surprise maneuver from their own 33 with seven seconds till halftime. Right on an end-around handoff gets 10. But Bobby Strickland stopped it. So now we have come to halftime with a UH lead of 16 to 7. And the teams head to their dressing rooms beneath the Astrodome stand. The fans get ready for another fabulous halftime show, supervised by Houston Boy Scout executive Vernon Moore, with an able staff of volunteer aides doing a splendid job. We have music and pleasant sights, such as these, with the University of Houston band, directed by James T. Matthews and the Auburn band, directed by B.G. Wall. There was much more pageantry and performances by many area high school bands before and after the game. Also presented at halftime was a salute to the lovely young ladies of the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl Royal Court. The queen was Miss Pat Paneski of South Texas Junior College. Princesses were Miss Annette McMahon of Houston Baptist College, Miss Ginger Van Hughes of Auburn, a majorette with the Auburn band, and Miss Tammy Nurse of the University of Houston, who was also Miss Houston and the UH homecoming queen in 1969. A special recognition at halftime was this listing on the fabulous Astrodome scoreboard of the many fine charities of the Houston area who receive all the profits beyond actual game expenses of this most worthwhile bowl event in which charities are the real big winners. The Blue Bonnet Bowl began in December 1959 at Rice Stadium in Houston with the largest crowd ever to see the debut game of a new bowl, 52,000, saw Clemson beat TCU. Since then, many fine universities have played in this annual NCAA-sponsored game. Literally hundreds of people have donated considerable time and money to the civic enterprise from first president Elvin M. Smith to this year's president, former Rice All-American Weldon Humble also inducted, incidentally, on this New Year's Eve day into the Texas Sports Hall of Fame at Dallas. Now we start the second half. John Riley kicks. Robert Newhouse receives at the Cougar 5 and returns 24 yards to the UH 29. Number 32, Ted Heskell, is another of the fine Houston runners. Here he breaks for 48 yards after a quick hit to the right by Mullen. Watch him fly, and remember this Tampa Junior is 6'3 and 222 pounds. He gets to the Auburn four before Don Webb makes the save. A few plays later, after a determined effort by the Tiger defense to hold three times inside the four, Hestel slips in for the score, four minutes into the second half. After that 71-yard drive, UH elects to go for two. But a Mullins pass meant for Riley Odom is broken up by McClinton, so Houston's lead remains 22 to 7. There's an Auburn rebuttal on the next series. Sullivan passes for 18 to Wallace Clark on this play, down to the UH 31 with L.D. Rowden dropping him there. The 
But when the Mad Dog defense of Houston forced a fourth and seven situation at the 28th, this 45-yard field goal attempt by Riley was blocked by Glenn Lewis of Tampa. Later in the quarter, we pick up a Houston field goal attempt set up by this 26-yard pass from Mullen to tight end Earl Thomas, the 220-pound junior from Greenville. This was to the Auburn 40. Anxious to get on the board again and narrow the gap, Sullivan passes off him. Here, a 17-yard aerial gain to sophomore Richard Smoke. Out to the Auburn 37, where Harrington is the defender. But potent defensive plays like these next two frustrate the visitors from Alabama. First, we see a hard rush by Glenn Lewis for an eight-yard loss. And then we see why Jerry Jones gets the top defensive player award with this hard rush by number 80 Jones, forcing Sullivan to throw hurried and incomplete. At the three quarters, Arlen Sims of the Astro organization gave the fans these interesting reports on the big scoreboard. Everything went great for UH in the second half. Here was a busted play, but Mullen still scrambled 12 yards out of it and a first down at the Auburn 31. A bit later, Mullen hit Riley Odom with a pass for eight to the Tiger 12 to set up another UH score. And here it is, Jim Strong runs strong again for 12 yards behind the left side block and three minutes into the final quarter, Houston increases its lead. Lopez tacks on the point to make it 29 to seven after a 57 yard drive and nine plays. The first play after the kickoff, a Sullivan pass is picked off by Richard Harrington for a 19 yard return to the Auburn 37. But the battling Tigers don't surrender either. They turn around on the second play later with Mike Cohen intercepting this Mullins pass meant for Elmo Wright at the 28th. And the defender strong shows he can tackle as well as run. A bit later, Houston has the ball again. A Newhouse breaks through for 23 yards on a trap play to midfield with Keith Green of Montgomery on the tackle. But Newhouse fumbles when this quick pitch goes awry, and Merrill Jenkins from Enterprise recovers for Auburn. Josco makes seven on this quick pitch play at right end with Charles Ford getting him. In the game's late stages, junior Tommy Trailer of Montgomery is in a quarterback for Auburn. He hits Beasley for nine. This trailer pass is to Ronnie Ross of Tuscaloosa to the Houston 42 for 11 yards. Rowden on the stop. Then Wallace Clark gets five in the draw play to the two 37. But on a fourth and 11 effort near midfield, trailer is rushed for an 11 yard loss by Glenn Lewis and the ball goes over on downs at the Auburn 47. On his last play with time running out, Gary Mullen topped a brilliant night by dashing 23 yards on the keeper to the Tiger 24. Houston's alternate quarterbacks get in as Tim Bailey gained six to the 20 on this run. And Rusty Clark of Houston Westbury has the thrill of tossing a touchdown pass with only 35 seconds to play. He is Tommy Mosek for his 20-yard TD pass. When Lopez makes good on the point kick, that closes the scoring with Houston leading 36 to 7. The players and official parties were ready to shower and dress and head for New Year's Eve celebrations along with thousands of fans to the nearby Astro Hall or around other Houston entertainment centers. But there was one more welcome duty for Bill Yeoman and his players as they gathered around the award stand on the sideline where Astro Blue Bonnet Chairman of the Board Joe Kelly Butler presided at quick post-game presentations. First, we see Jerry Jones get the award voted by the sports writers and announcers as the game's top defensive player. 
Then Jim Strong was honored as the offensive star of the game as he smashed the Blue Bonnet rushing record with 184 net yards on 32 carries. Quite phenomenal when you consider the most keen yards all season against Auburn was 173 by Tennessee. And as a grand finale, winning coach Bill Yeoman accepted the Bowles championship trophy for his team and the University of Houston, emerging victorious in their first major bowl game. And we hope you can be present in person when the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl is due to bid adieu to this year with another great New Year's Eve show at the Astrodome in Houston. And the mass band gave us the final message of the night. Goodbye to 1969 and hello to 1970. Our invitation is that popular and familiar Southwest saying, y'all come.